Hello, welcome to Moonfax. Today I'm drawing these two dudes crying, I guess. I stayed pretty faithful to my usual drawing process, in which I just used the same three colors for lighting and stuff. I did um, add some a darker brown to one of the guys, because I did that back in my Scarab video, and I thought it looked really nice there, but I think in this one that too much of his face was in shadow, so it didn't come out the way I wanted it to. Recently, before filming this video, I drew a self-portrait with short hair, and short hair isn't something I'm super comfortable with, so my intent on giving these guys short hair was to keep the ball rolling and help me get used to something that's out of my comfort zone. But usually I like giving all humans long hair because it's nice. Well, I think it's nice. Scowl lines feel cathartic to draw for me at this point, but I've been a little bit frustrated with the way they've been turning out. I think what I want to do is I want to learn some different scowl patterns between like different emotions and different face types. Some people's forehead scowl lines go horizontal instead of vertical, or some people have more of a snarl on their nose, and I know most people have lines coming from their nostrils. I don't usually put that in because I don't, I don't, I, I just don't like the look for some reason. But yeah, I want to add more variation to my mental scowl library, if that makes sense. Let's draw in the hair details now. And even though each strand is, has limited space because it's so short, we can still make it a little bit interesting with curves and stuff. Although it kind of feels like I'm stretching it on a few of the strands. The second guy's hair is a little bit longer, so I can get more wild with it, I guess. But I actually think I like the shorter hair better with the fringe pins kind of like the Caesar cut without any fades and stuff. This nice. Alright, now for the body base. We've already gone in with a layer of peach and now we're going to use a, a second layer with light brown to establish the skin tone. The light source is coming from a far distance from the right side which is going to leave most of this dude's face in shadow. So let's go ahead and add that with the blue color and for the darker shadows we'll layer the pink and the blue a couple more times to get a deeper purple. So we don't have a reference for this drawing to refer to, but I'm a little bit certain that the light wouldn't be actually be falling on his back in this way, but I'm having a lot of fun shading and defining his muscles, so I think I'm going to leave it and accept it because it's fun. The mulberry pink that we're going to use has two jobs. It's one for the transition between light and dark, and then two, it's for the deepest, darkest shadows.
Adding this cool sharp shadow underneath the chin got me so excited that I forgot to address this the beard stubble and I, di I didn't even treat it any differently than the skin. Thank you for watching and for supporting my channel. I truly, truly appreciate it.